Today, we will conclude the lecture series on propellers. We have been looking at lot of propeller uh, fundamentals, propeller theories. We have looked at propeller theories that uh, provide a basis of propeller uh, estimation, uh, performance estimation, uh, propeller uh, shape estimation, size estimation. One of the theories actually uh, was developed without even considering the propeller shape, blade shape. However, uh, after these uh, coverages, what we can do is, we can look at the propeller blade shape and we can look at some of the uh, typical propeller shapes, blade shapes, aerofoil shapes that have been used in the modern propellers. And then, of course, we will conclude the lecture series with a tutorial, uh, which means I will bring in a, a solved problem for you, and then I will leave you with a few problems for you to solve for yourselves. So, this uh, series of uh, problems should help you in understanding the theory that we have covered, very simple theories really and it should also help you in uh, creating propellers that you would, uh, if you would like to create a propeller for yourself, uh, for your small craft that you may be uh, making. So, all this is possible with the simple uh, theories that we have done in the course of last three lectures and today we will uh, conclude this uh, series of lectures on propellers. Today's lecture is mainly about uh, creating the blade shapes uh, to begin with uh, before we take up the propeller uh, problems. The blade shapes that we know uh, are made up of aerofoils as we have seen. Now, some of these blade shapes are very uh, peculiar or I would say uh, original to the propeller blade shapes. The aerofoils that are used in propellers are not used in any other applications. They are uh, typically made or designed for propellers uh, only and hence uh, we have aerofoil shapes and blade shapes that are uh, typical to the propellers of various kinds. Now, propellers can be of various kinds as we have discussed. Propellers can be subsonic, they can be transonic. We have not got down to making propellers which can work in supersonic uh, flight conditions. So, even today we do not have propellers that can fly an aircraft through supersonic speeds. It cannot uh, go through the shocks. Uh, the efficiency of the propellers goes down uh, very fast and hence they are not competitive to the jet engines, but at subsonic speeds it is pretty much known that the propellers are more efficient device for thrust making than many of the jet engines. And as a result of that, at uh, low subsonic speeds even today, propellers are the most preferred form of thrust making device for aircraft flight. Whereas, at uh, somewhat higher uh, subsonic speeds, uh, the turbofans and the turbojets have their own uh, place, especially for long distance flights. But there are many applications of uh, propellers, especially the ones we call turboprops, uh, that is propellers powered by gas turbine engines are used extensively in many uh, medium subsonic to slightly high subsonic uh, uh, transport aircraft both for cargo as well as for passenger as theoretically propellers are indeed the most efficient thrust making device. In fact, the propellers are being now redesigned to operate with transonic tip speeds and we shall have a look at such a propeller today. So, let us start taking a look at what a conventional propeller looks like and then we will take a look at the transonic aerofoils and a transonic uh, typical transonic modern propeller uh, what it looks like. A typical propeller as we have discussed many times is made up of aerofoils. Now, if you look at this uh, one single blade uh, of a propeller, you can see that along the length of the blade, the aerofoil section or the aerofoil shape changes drastically. 
near the root of the uh, propeller blade, the aerofoils are very thick. Uh, they could be uh, symmetrical aerofoils as uh, the requirement here is not so much as aerodynamics, but the requirement here is more of structural integrity and the strength of the propeller. As this entire propeller is uh, held at the root of the propeller and essentially structurally speaking, this entire propeller is a cantilever beam in rotation. And as a result of this cantilever arrangement of the propeller holding, the entire propeller load, the aerodynamic load, the lift and the thrust that we have talked about uh, created by the propeller itself has to be borne at the root of the propeller uh, and that is where all the stresses, strains and the moments are actually finally felt. So, this portion needs to be made very strong, so that they can hold the propeller in rotation. Uh, this is something which uh, has to be uh, taken care of right in the beginning of the design and as a result of which in this portion of the blade, the aerodynamics is often sacrificed and the structural uh, strength of the propeller blade at the root is given precedence. However, a little after that, especially from here onwards, let us say, you need to create uh, propeller uh, blade shapes that help in creating lift and which as we have seen finally, help in creating thrust. Now, the aerofoil sections that we choose in these sections are essentially conforming to the local flow. As we have seen in the uh, velocity uh, triangles earlier, the local flow incident on the blade there is typically low subsonic, a combination of forward velocity which we call v infinity and the rotational speed twice pi n r or omega r. Now, at this station near the root, uh, somewhat near the root of the propeller, the local uh, velocity v r is rather small, most likely to be low subsonic and hence you use a uh, aerofoil section which is indeed a low subsonic aerofoil. So, the aerofoil section that you choose around here is typically uh, meant for low subsonic usage. They are low cambered, but thick aerofoils which conform to low subsonic uh, application and you need somewhat thicker aerofoil to create a substantial amount of lift, which as we know would then create a significant amount of thrust. However, um, as you move along, you will find that the aerofoils are becoming thinner and thinner and thinner and at the tip, it is a very thin aerofoil. So, they become progressively thin aerofoils and as we can, as we know from the aerofoil understanding that these are all different aerofoils. These are not the same aerofoils made thinner. These are indeed different aerofoils altogether because at the tip, Again, if we go back to the velocity fields that we were talking about, near the uh, tip of the uh, propeller, the resultant velocity v r incident on this uh, leading edge is going to be rather high. And this is likely to be high subsonic for most of the modern uh, aircraft propellers. So, you need a high subsonic aerofoil, uh, which is normally a thin aerofoil to uh, keep the drag low, otherwise the drag would mount very fast. A thick aerofoil uh, which you use near the roots, if you use near the tips would create enormous amount of drag at that high speed and as a result of which the propeller efficiency would be extremely low. So, you need to create a uh, 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 aerofoil which uh, has a very high lift by drag ratio. Now, C L by C D of course, as we know is essentially a figure of merit for uh, aerodynamic efficiency of uh, any aerofoil and as a result of which as you go towards the tip from the root to the tip, you have thinner and thinner aerofoil. So, that you continue to have high aerodynamic efficiency of each and every of these sections and as a result of which the overall thrust creation is done with higher prop uh, propulsive efficiency or propeller efficiency. Now, this is the reason because of which you have so many different kinds of aerofoils as you go along the length of the propeller from root to the tip of the propeller. 
The another thing you would notice is near the uh, root of the propeller, the angle at which the aerofoils are set are at high angle. For example, near the absolute root, which is actually in inside the root, the angle is nearly 42 degrees and then near the, uh, the next aerofoil, which is a proper aerofoil, a uh, uh, lift creating aerofoil, the angle is 39.5 degree, nearly 40 degrees. Whereas, as you move towards the uh, tip of the propeller, the angle falls and near the root of the propeller, near the tip of the propeller, the angle is as low as 17.3 degrees. So, that is the change of the angular setting of each and every propeller and the aerofoils now become what we call uh, finer and finer setting. So, the root of the propeller is set at what can be called a coarse setting and the tip of the propeller is typically set at a fine setting. So, within the blade itself, the propeller uh, aerofoil settings move from coarse setting to fine setting as it moves from root to the tip of the blade. Now, this is also conforming to the uh, inlet flow angle phi, which we have seen in the earlier lectures and conforming to the uh, velocity field there. That means, a uh, uh, combination of forward velocity and the rotational speed omega r. So, combination of the two create this uh, flow angle situation and then of course, by design you attribute or accommodate a small amount of uh, angle of attack, which finally creates the blade setting angle beta. So, this is how these uh, aerofoils are selected, this is how these aerofoils are set at these places and together they are blended into one air propeller blade shape, uh, which then creates uh, thrust uh, in a more efficient manner. Now, as we have seen choice of these aerofoils, setting of these aerofoils together and blending them into one blade shape create a uh, efficient propeller blade, uh, which should be efficient during all times of its operation. Of course, as we know today that all propeller blades today are under uh, variable pitch operating uh, controls situation and as a result of which most of the propellers do have uh, variable pitch controls normally associated with the propeller uh, operation. If we look at it, the propeller blade, this is the leading edge. Uh, if you turn the propeller, uh, this is also called the leading edge, which as you will see probably is a comparatively flatter surface. So, if you look at this propeller blade, uh, this is the let us say top surface. So, that is the top surface, which as you can see has a curvature, whereas the bottom surface, which is the surface, which is we call leading surface. That is the surface that moves forward in rotation. Uh, so, that is the surface that meets the air first okay? and as a result of which you have a uh, comparatively uh, flat surface, which uh, from aerofoil parlance that would actually be called often a lower surface. Uh, or under surface and we have seen that many of the aerofoils used are actually flat under surface. So, you can see here that many of the aerofoil that are used here actually do have flat under surface uh, aerofoil shape. So, when you put them in the propeller uh, that surface often becomes the leading surface. So, probably instead of calling leading edge more appropriate would be to call it leading surface whereas, this is indeed the leading edge of the aerofoils. So, this is the leading edge of each of these aerofoils put together, whereas this would more appropriately we should be called probably leading surface and that is the surface that moves into the air first as the propeller rotates. So, this is how a propeller blade shape is uh, put together created with the help of a large number of aerofoils, uh, bigger the propeller uh, more is the number of aerofoils that you would need to put together and blending them into one smooth blade shape. Uh, as we have seen many of the propellers in the early era 50 years back, the propellers used to be made up of wood because that was the easiest material to give complicated shape like this. 
but over the years uh, they used uh, aluminum alloys uh, for cast aluminum for giving the shape and later on in modern propeller era they are using composite material to uh, give more complicated propeller shapes in a most accurate manner more accurate the blade shaping is in conformity with this aerofoil shapes more the propeller efficiency is likely to be achieved during actual operation. So, this was a conventional propeller shape. I will quickly show you a propeller aerofoil which is meant for transonic applications. Now, this is the kind of transonic propeller aerofoil which is used these days. It's, it can be used in a flight mark number which is close to let us say high subsonic flight mark number and during such a high subsonic flight mark number the flow over the aerofoil as we see here can go uh, supersonic. So, on the surface of the aerofoil the flow would go actually supersonic uh, even though the entry mark number here is uh, high subsonic and hence these are called transonic aerofoils. So, somewhere over the aerofoil uh, shape the flow would indeed go supersonic and it is most likely as it is shown in the diagram here is most likely to again come out with subsonic profile. So, somewhere on the blade surface the flow transits from subsonic to supersonic and then again transits back to subsonic and leaves the propeller blade uh, subsonically. So, th that is why it is called a transonic propeller and the blade shape that you see here is also created. These are typically computer generated aerofoil shapes and they are created for propellers. These aerofoils are not used for any other purpose in any other kind of aerofoil applications. They are typically created for propellers and uh, as I mentioned they are computer generated uh, to conform to transonic local flow that is uh, expected to be uh, present during uh, propeller operation. Now, this kind of transonic uh, aerofoil is typically used uh, in the tip area where we were earlier using very thin aerofoils to conform to a high subsonic uh, flow. In this is the area where flow is now likely to go transonic in the modern uh, propellers and instead of these thin aerofoils, uh, thin subsonic aerofoils, uh, the modern uh, designers would like to use such transonic aerofoils where the local flow there, the combination of forward velocity and uh, omega r that is the rotational speed makes the flow uh, actually go uh, supersonic over the aerofoil shape. So, this is a typical transonic aerofoil shapes and as we have seen you need more of these aerofoil shapes to make up an aerofoil a, a propeller or part of a propeller. So, most of these aerofoil shapes are computer generated uh, by the designers and then blended into a propeller blade shape. Uh, a modern propeller uh, would have transonic blade shapes around here, but it would still have subsonic blade shapes in the lower half of the propeller and they would continue to look something like this. That means, it will, they will go even in the modern propellers uh, progressively thicker and thicker as they move towards the root and the root will have to be designed to withstand high stress and strain and the, the large moment that comes due to the cantilever fixing of the propeller blade. So, that would continue to uh, hold good. Uh, however, only the tip sections would now be redesigned to accommodate uh, transonic uh, aerofoil shapes which are nowadays generated uh, typically for propeller applications. We can look at a typical modern uh, propeller as you can see here, it is made up of 8 blade section, 8 propellers and each of these propellers is made up of a large number of aerofoil shapes and some of the aerofoil shapes uh, towards the tip of the propeller are likely to be uh, very likely to be transonic aerofoils. Also, one can see here this modern blade shape has used a sweep. This sweep is something which is normally associated with aircraft wings. However, many of the uh, bladed machines 
uh, typically the propellers and compressors and fans are using uh, the sweep uh, for a number of aerodynamic advantages and especially when the propellers go transonic, the sweeps uh, have certain uh, clear advantages in terms of uh, containing the uh, drag that comes about and as a result of which uh, the propeller efficiency is held at a higher value. So, this is a typical uh, modern uh, propeller uh, with swept uh, leading edge and as you can see it has certain amount of sweep at the trailing edge also and, uh, and this also uses the transonic aerofoils so that these propellers can be called transonic propellers. So, these are the modern uh, propellers that are used in modern aircraft, a very modern aircraft and as you can see here it uses up to 8 blades to create one propeller for thrust making uh, for aircraft, for modern aircraft which fly at high subsonic uh, flight speeds. Okay, now, we can uh, look at uh, some of the problems which uh, we would uh, like to uh, use the theories that we have done in the earlier lectures and these theories would help you in solving some of the problems. Now, before I give you the problems, I will try to solve a problem for you and this problem is of a variable pitch propeller and this propeller uh, is a, a little more conventional propeller. Uh, what it states here is it is used on an aircraft which is cruising at 644 kilometers per hour uh, at uh, sea level to begin with and is powered by a three bladed propeller. Now, this propeller is connected to an engine which rotates at 2600 rpm through a 1 is to 2 gearbox. So, the uh, rotational speed is actually uh, brought down by 1 is to 2 ratio, uh, which means the propeller speed would actually be half of the engine speed and it, it is supplied with a power of uh, 1491.5 kilowatts of power at that particular operating uh, condition, flight operating condition. It is stated that the propeller is designed with blades of Naka blade aerofoil sections. So, it uses the Naka aerofoils which we had looked at before. The question is uh, to compute the propeller diameter and the efficiency of the propeller at this operating condition. If the propeller is a variable pitch propeller, what would be its efficiency at 161 kilometers per hour? So, our uh, problem is that we have a propeller. Uh, that is a variable pitch propeller. It is of course, powered by an engine and it is flying or cruising uh, straight and level uh, with an aircraft and it is a three bladed propeller. So, we can use and it is stated that it uses the Naka blade section, uh, which uh, allows us to use some of the propeller characteristics of uh, Naka aerofoil propellers, uh, which are three bladed propellers. As we have seen before, every kind or every propeller actually should have its own characteristics or characteristics maps as we have seen and we need to uh, use those characteristics to solve these uh, kind of problems. So, this is a variable pitch problem and I will try to solve this problem for you, so that you get, get a feel of how to solve typically a variable pitch problem and later on I will give you some problems which are uh, probably somewhat simpler problems for you to solve for yourself. Okay, let us see how the solution of this problem would proceed. The density of the air at this operating uh, condition uh, that is a normal sea level and that is uh, uh, rho air is given as 1.22 uh, kg per meter cube that is a standard air density at sea level and the flight speed is given as 644 kilometers per hour, which translates to 178.88 meters per second. As we know, uh, most of our solutions would proceed with uh, velocities etcetera given in terms of uh, meters per second, whereas the normal uh, method of designating flight speed is in normally in terms of kilometers per hour. 
Now, it is given that it is using power of 149, uh, 1491.5 uh, kilowatt, uh, which of course translates to uh, 1491500 joules per second, uh, that is as per the SI uh, system. And the propeller, it is given that the propeller rotates at half the engine speed through a gearbox ratio of uh, 2 is to 1. So, it is rotating at 1300 rpm, which then translates to 21.666 rps, that is uh, revolutions per second. So, that is the rotational speed of the propeller. Now, these are the given parameters uh, as given in the problem statement. What we can do is, we can look at uh, the first thing, uh, the speed power coefficient of this propeller given the parameters that are already uh, supplied. Now, this speed parameter uh, power coefficient is something which we had discussed in the last class and we can use it here for the propeller uh, designation. Now, speed power coefficient as from its definition uh, comes out to be 3.175. Uh, that is the numerical value of the speed power coefficient which as we know it does not require the propeller uh, size or the diameter. Uh, so, this is one propeller uh, parameter which does not require the propeller dimension uh, for it to be evaluated. So, we have the speed power coefficient as 3.175. So, what we shall do is, we shall use the speed power coefficient and use the uh, speed power uh, coefficient plot or graph to arrive at the blade setting from the maximum efficiency consideration. Uh, we are assuming that uh, we will solve the problem for uh, maximum efficiency of the propeller for this particular blade setting or for this particular operating condition and the blade setting which we will be arriving at. The other thing is the problem is now going to be solved at a prop propeller design reference radius of 0.75 r, which is often the normal propeller design reference radius, which means the propeller blade shapes are often first created at the 0.75 r. Let us quickly go back to the propeller uh, diagram, which we have looked at right in the beginning. You see, uh, all these blade shapes need to be created by design. Uh, the aerofoils need to be set at various designations, but quite often uh, one starts off with one of the blade shapes, which could be somewhere around here, which is to begin with representative of the entire propeller. So, this let us say this particular uh, airfoil section, which is let us say at 0.75 uh, of the uh, radius of the entire propeller. So, if this is uh, let us say the axis of rotation, the radius of the entire propeller is so much and this is let us say at 0.75 of the radius of the propeller. So, this section would be considered the reference radius or reference section of the propeller and for the design purpose to begin with that represents the entire propeller. So, the performance at that section would be representative of the entire propeller. So, if you calculate the values of uh, elemental thrust there, that would be an average elemental thrust representative of the entire propeller. So, that is how quite often the propeller design is created, propeller design is uh, proceeded that you start off with a representative blade section which is not at 50 percent, which is normally at around 0.75 r and that is where normally the propeller reference radius is often created. If you have a transonic propeller, which we had just looked at, the reference radius could be a little higher, it could be somewhere around 80 percent uh, of the propeller blade, somewhere over here, uh, which is uh, likely to be then a more representative of the propeller uh, blade loading. So, propeller reference radius is often uh, chosen during the design and we are going to solve our problem at that reference radius, which is as I mentioned representative essentially of the entire propeller actually. So, we will proceed along those lines. 
Now, if we look at typical three bladed propeller Naka using Naka airfoils and the blade is being considered at 0.75 r. If we look at this uh, blade section uh, blade characteristics, what we see here is the speed power coefficient C s is shown here in the x axis. The y axis on this side is advanced ratio V by N d. On this side you have the propeller efficiency eta and we have the carpet plots available uh, of these parameters C s versus efficiency and then C s versus V by N d. The other thing that is shown here as variable is the blade setting angle beta. Now, this angles which are shown here are the blade setting angles beta. Now, as a result of which as you can see here higher the blade setting angle higher are the uh, you can go into the higher advance ratio that means the higher forward speeds of the aircraft uh, and the propeller which is flying. Whereas, if you are stuck to a fixed pitch propeller at a lower blade setting angle you cannot uh, move at a very high speed. So, uh, this is a typical uh, propeller characteristic which allows the propeller to move at comparatively higher uh, forward speeds. The efficiency is also shown here with various blade setting angles uh, at the lower blade setting angles as we can see here the range of operation is very small over a very small range of C s and the C s range is extended at higher and higher angles of beta uh, blade setting angle. Uh, of each of these blade setting angles you can reach fairly good efficiency slightly higher blade setting angles can start giving you efficiencies of the order of 85, 86 percent. At very low blade setting angles, the efficiencies are a little lower of the order of 80 percent. So, if you use typical Naka aerofoil sections and typical three bladed propeller, uh, this is the kind of characteristics that uh, is normally available for uh, that blade or that uh, propeller and if you are now trying to find out how this propeller is going to behave under a particular uh, operating condition that has been specified in this problem, you would need to use this uh, characteristic map. Let us use the characteristic map and see uh, where we get our solutions. You see if you uh, calculate the values of the C s which we have found 3.17. So, this is where you start off with and then you arrive at uh, V by N d which is of the order of 2.25 and you arrive at a solution point which is somewhere over here and you are likely to get a blade setting solution of the order of 46 degrees slightly higher than 45 degree which has been uh, provided here. So, if you proceed uh, vertically upwards at 46 degree uh, efficiency curve you could get at this C s an efficiency of the order of 86 percent. So, in this graph what we can see is if you use the parameters given and calculate the fundamental parameter C s and the uh, advance ratio uh, V by N d you can arrive at a suitable blade setting angle for this particular blade section the reference section. So, the reference section of the blade at 0.75 r should now be at 46 uh, degree uh, blade setting angle. As we know the blade setting angle would indeed vary from root to the tip of the blade. So, this 46 degree is at the reference blade section at 0.75 r and not for the entire uh, propeller of all the blade sections. So, that needs to be kept in mind and uh, this is a variable pitch propeller. So, this particular blade setting is suitable for that particular operating condition which is specified in the problem. At any other operating condition you can choose another blade section through variable pitch mechanism and operate at that section to get a uh, good efficiency of operation. So, this particular uh, operation now gives us an efficiency of the order of 86 percent. Okay, let us proceed uh, with this uh, problem solving. We get the solutions which is uh, let us say the best match point uh, and as a result of which the extrapolated blade angle you can see that it does not fall on 
one of the lines. So, you need a slightly extrapolated uh, line which is a 46 degree line. Uh, so, it is somewhere between 45 and 50 and close to 45. So, let us say the solution is 46 degree and the best efficiency for that 46 degree again we did not have a 46 degree uh, efficiency line. So, that needs to needed to be created and as a result of which that extrapolated solution gives us a best blade angle for the reference section of the propeller at 46 degree and corresponding best efficiency would be 86 percent representative of the entire propeller and the advance ratio there is 2.25. Let us proceed along this. Uh, from this, we can now compute that the diameter of this propeller based on these parameters would be 3.667 meters and as a result of which uh, we get a value of j now. The velocity forward velocity we had already calculated 27.77 meters per second as the alternative flying speed that was specified in the problem. Now, we are solving the alternative flying speed where it was specified as 161 kilometers per hour a lower flight speed and that at that low flight speed uh, the forward velocity is 27.777 meters per second and there the advance ratio now is 0.562 given the value of d we have already found. Now, at this flying condition the speed power coefficient C s would now be 0.793. Now, you can use this value of advance ratio and this value of speed power coefficient to find a new solution and we use the graph again. What we see here that we are now at a rather low speed power coefficient, a low flying condition and at which the advance ratio is also rather low and our solution point is somewhere over here. So, this is what you get when you uh, try to find a solution which is pretty close to the maximum efficiency uh, operating uh, condition of the uh, particular propeller which for which the characteristics is available to us. And as a result of this, we can uh, conclude the solution uh, by looking at that part of the graph a little more closely. Uh, this is where the solution point is and this is where we have arrived at uh, uh, as our solution and uh, we get a blade angle as 29 degree, which is slightly less than the 30 degree line which we have over here. That is a 30 degree line and as we come along this and at, at the C s of uh, the value that we have found, uh, this is what the solution blade setting angle would be that is 29 degree. Now, if you proceed along that and go to the 29 degree solution angle, you would get an efficiency propeller efficiency of 50 percent. Now, this is what you get from this map which is uh, representative of this particular propeller which has been designed uh, and characteristic map created out of that design. So, this is the solution of the alternative uh, flying uh, operating condition that was specified in the problem where we get a blade setting angle now of 29 degree with an efficiency of 50 percent. So, when you are flying here you should be at a, a blade setting angle of 29 degree with an efficiency of 50 percent. So, it can be seen that at this value of j, which is representative of a low flying condition, the blade setting angle is 29 degree, where the efficiency is rather poor. It is only 50 percent efficiency, which is a very low efficiency of operation. So, what can be done is, if you now set the blade setting at 15 degree, you could actually get an efficiency of 80 percent. Okay. Now, this is possible with this uh, propeller only and the blade setting angle could actually be used to get a higher efficiency and this would have uh, given a speed power coefficient of 1.1. Now, what happens is at that value the propeller would go on a over speeding to absorb the power supplied. Now, you see we had already specified the amount of power that is available, the gearbox ratio that is available and if you use those values as your input power 
and the result is that you would arrive at a situation where propeller is using uh, need propeller need is less than the power that is being supplied and this would result in a over speeding of the propeller. This over speeding of the propeller is not a good idea. The propeller would get uh, hugely uh, stressed due to the over speeding and as a result of which the propeller might break. So, the problem statement the alternative operating condition at low flying speed then would require actually a variable pitch mechanism and this is where the variable pitch mechanism and its utility really comes in. You can now be used uh, the variable pitch mechanism can now be used and you can now go outside the constant speed operation. So, that uh, you can get a higher efficiency. So, if you continue to use automatic variable pitch mechanism with constant speed, you would result in a low speed operation. You need to realize that the constant speed variable pitch mechanism, which can go on automatic operation would result then in a low efficiency operation. So, you need to choose your operating uh, controls rather uh, judiciously. If you just leave it to automatic control as we see in this problem solution, you would result in a, a low efficiency propeller operation of the order of 50 percent efficiency. On the other hand, what can be done in this particular operating condition is that you could actually choose a, a different speed of operation at which the power of the engine would actually be much lower. The propeller evidently does not need so much power anymore it can do with much less power and you can choose a lower power setting, which means a lower speed of operation of the engine. And if you do that at that low speed, the power matching between the propeller and the engine would be more appropriate. And in that situation, you can now choose a blade setting angle of 15 degree at which the C s would be 1.1 and you can operate at an efficiency of 80 percent. So, you see you can have variable pitch mechanism and you can keep the propeller operating at variable pitch. Normally, you would like to do that during cruise. During cruise, you keep the propeller on automatic variable pitch constant speed operation and propeller would always have a what, what we call the floating uh, pitch mechanism and it will set its pitch, but that is very good during uh, cruise. Whereas, during low flying conditions, uh, during very off design operating conditions, you would probably like to choose uh, an engine operation at a lower speed. So, that the matching between propeller and the engine in terms of power matching uh, also in terms of torque matching is more appropriate and there is no chance of the propeller over speeding to a very high speeds, which as I mentioned could result in the breakage of the propeller physical breakage of the propeller. So, you need to and not to speak of the fact that it operates at a very low efficiency. Uh, so, the result is uh, under certain operating condition as we see it will be more judicious to go for a speed control, control the speed at a lower speed of operation and then uh, choose a propeller blade setting which now as we see can be a fine setting at which you get a good efficiency 80 percent efficiency of operation of the propeller. So, the solution of this problem gives us a glimpse of the variable pitch mechanism, which uh, is used in most of the modern aircraft today. And we see that uh, the utility of the variable pitch mechanism uh, indeed gives us a lot of uh, handle in terms of uh, operating efficiency of the propeller, but there is a certain amount of uh, control uh, logic that needs to be built in. So, not all the time the engine or the propeller needs to operate or should operate at constant speed uh, and hence the control algorithm or the control law that needs to govern the operation of the propeller and the engine together needs to be built in judiciously. So, that it continues to give very efficient operation during all modes of the aircraft flight. Okay. What I will do now is I will present to you a few tutorial problems for your, yourself to solve very simple problems 
uh, so that you can make use of the theory that we have done in the course of these lecture series and apply those theories to the problem solving. Uh, I would say these are rather simple problems and should not have any difficulty in solving the problems. Wherever we have the problems which are numerical problems, the answer to the numericals are uh, actually given. So, you can check your solutions and see whether you are arriving at the correct solutions. And as I mentioned, uh, you should not have any difficulty solving these problems using the theories that we have done in the course of these lectures. So, these are the tutorial problems that I present to you. I will read out the problems to you one by one. The first problem is of course, uh, a propeller which has a diameter of d that develops uh, thrust t when operating with an advance ratio j and r p m n. Now, this propeller is to be replaced by a pair of equal propellers of the same shape operating at the same velocity v and advance ratio j producing together the same amount of thrust t. So, the idea is to use two propellers obviously smaller in size which would together would produce same amount of thrust operating at same advance ratio. That means, an aircraft which was being earlier propelled by a single propeller is now being to be propelled by two smaller propellers uh, have which have the same shape. So, that they produce the same amount of thrust. The problem is find out the diameter d prime and the rotational speed n prime of the two new propellers which are obviously going to be smaller propellers and prove that the total power required by the two propellers equals the original propeller power. And if that is so, if that is so, you can use the same engine probably to use two propellers or you can use two smaller engines which together produce the same power. So, it is a very simple problem and you should not have any difficulty solving this problem. The second problem is an aircraft flying at 592 kilometers per hour is powered by a propeller rotating at 1800 rpm. Uh, that is a fairly common uh, rotational speed of propeller somewhere between 1200 to 1800 are normal propeller rotating speeds. The propeller is of diameter 3.05 meter and uses a NACA 0015 airfoil section uh, which are uh, very standard old NACA airfoils. At the reference blade section at 0.9144 meters from the root, the blade angle is 47.7 degree. Compute the local flow angle at that station. Again, a very simple problem. So, if you use the simple fundamental uh, things that we have done, you should not have any difficulty finding the local flow angle. The answer is given here and that will also tell you what the local uh, incidence is of that particular blade setting. So, this is again a very simple problem. The third problem is an aircraft is propelled by 4.572 meter diameter propeller which produces 35.6 kilo newtons of thrust. Uh, thrust uh, as we see now uh, would be uh, expressed in terms of uh, kilo newtons uh, uh, for most of the uh, aircraft engines uh, including propellers and all jet engines. Now, this aircraft is flying at an altitude where the atmospheric conditions are such that the density of the air is 1.03 kilograms per meter cube. Using momentum theory, compute the induced velocity through the disk. Uh, induced velocity is the small v which we have done during the momentum or the actuator disk theory and the final velocity of the flow in the far wake which is far uh, downstream of the uh, actuator disk or the propeller in the momentum theory and the answers are given here. The fourth problem is that the compute the diameter of the flow, uh, flow field in the far wake of a propeller of a diameter 3.05. That means, the propeller has a diameter of 3.05 and it is producing a thrust of 8.9 kilonewtons uh, 
while flying at a speed of 322 kilometers per hour, what would be the diameter of the flow field in the far wake of a propeller? So, that is the uh, problem statement which is given here. Uh, should should be able to find from the propeller theories that we have done. The last uh, problem that I present to you is a 907.2 kg helicopter is powered by a 9.144 meter diameter ro rotor, uh, which is as we know is very similar to actually a propeller. So, propeller theory applies there. Uh, quite uh, largely. And when this helicopter is landing, it descends at an uniform rate under the sea level conditions and the induced velocity small v as we have done in momentum theory is one third of the rate of descent of the helicopter. Compute the velocity at which the helicopter is descending. A hint is given here for your solution that the rotor upward thrust is equal to the helicopter weight and uh, the helicopter weight is given here. So, you should be able to use the momentum theory now to compute the solution of this problem. The answer is given here. Uh, the sixth problem that we have is uh, an aircraft while cruising at 724 kilometers per hour is expected to encounter 5,927 newtons of uh, drag. The propeller flying uh, this aircraft is of diameter 3.657 meters and is designed with Naka 5868-9 three bladed propeller blades of, of which we have done the characteristics uh, before in the lecture. The engine delivers 1,491.4 kilowatts while the propeller runs at 1300 rpm very similar to the uh, problem that we have solved and check if the aircraft propeller is matched for the cruise cruise flight and compute any extra power or power shortfall that may be found so you got to check whether the cruise flight is possible and whether there is any power shortfall the answer is given here and you can check your solution with the answers that are given here. So, this is these are the few uh, problems that you may like to solve and uh, by yourself and check out that the theories that we have done actually lead to reasonable solution of the of very simple problems uh, that are available in many of the textbooks. So, uh, this concludes our lecture series on uh, propellers. Uh, Next, we shall be moving towards uh, various jet engine ideal cycle analysis, which will be done by Professor Pradeep. And uh, from propellers, we will move on to the various jet engines and later on, I will come back and I will present to you uh, the engines which are used for rockets and missiles and a glimpse at some of the engines that are used for uh, spacecraft. So, rockets, missiles, spacecrafts is what I will come back to you for in between Professor Pradeep will present to you the jet engines and the details of the jet engine cycle analysis.